Hello students of Design of Concrete Structures C703 Lesson number 2 Here we will be discussing materials The first of the material is concrete and the other one is the reinforcement that means steel In concrete we have several materials which combines and the concrete is made First of all, we will talk about cement. Cement is a adhesive and cohesive properties. Cement has adhesive and cohesive properties necessary to bond in tar, bond in aggregates into a solid mass of educated strength. Uh, we know we uh, know that cement is a binding material. That's all. Then, in general, we'll call it as binding material, hydraulic cement. Is. The cement, the raw material of cement is lime, stone, and clay. Its chemical name is calcium oxide and clays uh, or shale, which are the silicon dioxide and aluminate. These are ground and blended and fused to clinkers. That means heated, heated in a clinker, in a kiln, to few, heated to clinkers in a kiln and cooled. Gypsum and additional untreated limestone are added and the mixture is ground to the required fineness. That means, first of all, we have to take raw material like limestone and clay and these will be ground together and in a, clay, in a kiln it will be heated up to fusion and after that fusion is cooled and then gypsum and Additional limestone is something, some additional limestone is added and ground it to the required powder or fineness, then it will become cement and uh, with water coming on it, uh, the reaction with hydraulic uh, water, it will react and ultimately they, they, will, they will be hardened to, to become, with aggregate to become concrete. And now we will talk about aggregates. In our country, there are two types of aggregate. One is stone aggregate and the other is brick aggregate. Stone is the is a natural material <coughs> which comes as boulders or pebbles, which is available in the riverbed or in near the hills. These are, if it is a big size, this is, this is cast to certain size, which will fit into the forms and will become coarse aggregate and now in our country we use another type of aggregate that is brick aggregate. We crush the walnut bricks into small sizes and sift according to our necessity and we use that as aggregate, coarse aggregate. And sand is the major fine aggregate and this is available in our country and in most of the countries, both these aggregates, stone aggregate or brick aggregate or sand is available abundantly and in natural form these are found, these are picked up and used for in as fine aggregate of the, of the as aggregate of the for concrete. So we have two types of aggregate, one is the coarse aggregate, another is the fine aggregate. Coarse aggregate is uh, made from or obtained from stones and brick aggregate is overburned uh, brick, big jama bricks are crushed to size uh, required sizes and that becomes the aggregate, coarse aggregate. Here we should mention one thing that the size of the coarse aggregate, uh, if the size of the coarse aggregate remains bigger then it will not pass through the gap of uh, reinforcing bars and if uh, the slab thickness is smaller than in that case we need smaller uh, coarse aggregate that is one third of the slab thickness the maximum size of coarse aggregate should not be more than one third of the slab thickness or one, one fifth of the form the, the form the size that is to if a structure size is five inches then one in maximum size of coarse aggregate will be one inch and there is another requirement for the size of the coarse aggregate that is it should pass through the gap between reinforcing steels 
and in beams and beams especially the reinforcing steels are very close and that's why the aggregate size should be properly chosen that the aggregate size should be three fourth of the gap between the bars that is the requirement and it should be well graded that means they are must be present for all sizes not one size only and the gap therefore the graded aggregate you should call it a graded aggregate and the if we uh, draw the gradation curve we should uh, form an s curve that is the uh, requirement for gradation of aggregate and in concrete cement concrete uh, normally mass concrete uh, will have a weight of 150 140 to 152 on the, on the average we take it as 145 this weight will be required for while we will be ca calculating the uh, weight for the structures when we will be going to the force system of the structure Properties in compression for concrete. Figure 2.1 shows a typical stress strain curve for normal weight concrete. And there, the and on the left side is the compressive stress F, Fc in KSI, and in the horizontal, the base horizontal scale, that is a strain. In the right hand side is given MPM. The, you can see the nature of this compression curve and one thing you should know, one thing you should realize that the strain in the concrete at near failure or maximum strain that is at the peak of the compressive strength is 0 0.003. This 0 0.003 strain will be required while we will be going for the design of beams and developing the formulas or relations for the structures, structural design of concrete. So you must remember that the strain in on the on the average for all all uh, compressive strain the st st concrete is 0 0.003. This is a point to be noted and memorized for the whole for your life, the, for the whole, whole of your life. And there's a you, we, you must look into this figure, figure 2.1, and uh, try to understand that the uh, 0.003 point is, will be coming out the, this value frequently. Then we we'll talk about steel. You know the reinforcing steel are available in the market uh, for different st strength, like 40 ksi, 50 ksi, 60 ksi. 75 and like that. Nowadays, 50 ksi steel is not available, uh, though 40 is also not preferred. Nowadays, 60 and above steel, yes, so that we can combine these two materials together to treat it as a single material. The one major thing is the thermal expansion coefficients. It is noted that. The thermal expansion coefficient of steel is 6.5, but for concrete is very close to that, that is 5.5 into 10 to the power 6 degree per degree Fahrenheit. It's a very, uh, very convenient uh, similarity for these two materials that they will act simultaneously and, and uh, combinedly. This 6.5 and 6.5.5 expansion is very close. That's why when, from when it will be heated, the expansion of one will not be far away from the expansion of the other one, or contraction of the one will not be far away from the contraction of the other. That's why they, they, they will remain altogether intact. While the corrosion resistance of BR steel is poor, concrete helps in, uh, in the concrete that surrounds the steel reinforcement provides excellent corrosion protection. This is another advantage of these two material to, uh, to be used simultaneously but, but in one structure or one, one unit. The cor corrosion problem will be protected by concrete coverage. 
the fire resistance of concrete is much more than the fire resistance of steel as the steel will be covered with fire uh, concrete the fire will the steel will not be so steel will not, will not expand so much as is expected if it, it was exposed without any coverage that's why a thick layer of concrete will save the expansion and then the, the two material will remain as one material they will not separate if one is the, if the expansion for one is very close to the expansion of another one they will not separate and it will, it will remain as indirect material these three are the advantageous point for these two materials to be combined to be perform as one material yes uh, about reinforcing bar there are several sizes available in the market uh, it is 3/8 inch to 1 1/3 inch is for normal building and normal structure Th these are the sizes available in the market and these uh, def nowadays the reinforcing bars are deformed and the in figure the deformations the separate type of deformations are shown in the figure and you uh, you can see in the market also that the, the, there are different deformations of our steel normal now we will talk about the grades and strength the about the steel material is has some some strength which is in ksi normally very low strength steel is 40 ksi and there are several type of uh, this steel grading from 50 60 70 75 like that up to now it is uh, 60 uh, ksi steel is preferred and 50 ksi steel is not available and in very low cases very small structures 40 ksi steels can be used and up to 70 75 now it is bangladesh uh, there, there is a grade 72 that comes from the mk system that's why that is 72 otherwise in a p s system 40 50 60 70 like that the, the grades are like that the in in testing while we test this steel bars then we'll find a shape like next figure the shapes of this stress strain curve is given in next pages number in a the strain is 0 0.001 and in strain the in s a graph the scale is smaller in b graph this is expanded uh, some part of this is expanded to that that one that's why that's it is here the modulus velocity of all is all grades of steel is 29 into 10 to the power 6 psi this you have to remember for your life and this will be used everywhere anywhere this modulus of velocity, the modulus of velocity which is written in the previous page that is modulus velocity is 29 to 10 to the power 6 ksi for all grades of steel this is an important thing to be noted and you have learned this uh, modulus velocity and this is in curve in your uh, strength of material slab in elaborate form that's why we will be uh, using this as values taken directly from this memory or from the text and we will use this 60 grade or 70 grade or 50 grade and modulus of velocity as 29 into 10 to the power 6 psi this, this much we should be remembering at uh, this stage about steel and uh, on page 11 we have written four points here Number one point is this internal forces such as bending, moment, shear force, and normal and shear stresses at any section of a member are in equilibrium with the effect of the external loads at that section. This proposition is not an assumption, but actually it, it is like this. The strain in embedded reinforcement reinforcing bar is the same 
as that of the surrounding concrete. It happens due to this bonding between the, these two together. And in the cross section, prior to loading, after loading, this cross section remains plain. This, this is another proposition. In view of the fact that the tensile strength of concrete is only a small fraction of its normally the tensile strength of concrete is less, that's why in tension zone the concrete stand concrete will not take any uh, any stress and there may there will be some cracks which is negligible and that's why these two materials can be used as a single one for construction and structures. This is for today.